That's I... anti-bed! God! No, I'm anti-bedroom. Hi guys, welcome to today's episode of Debate Me. I'm Miranda. And I'm Jaden. And today's topic is gonna be... Bedrooms. Wow, wow. <laughs> now, this is my topic. I've chosen it, which means Miranda is going to get to choose her position first. Miranda, bedrooms, yes or no? Yes! All right, I'm going to take no. Uh, do you, do you want to go first? Yes, bedrooms provide a wonderful away space from where you live, where you exercise, maybe where you work, where responsibility encroaches on you. The bedroom is free from all that. It's literally a room for your bed if we get semantic about it. Go in, sleep, maybe color code your closet, but that's that's all the work that's getting done in the bedroom and that's that's why I like bedrooms out of my sheer laziness. Also, I want to congratulate you on getting cast in a 1980s episode of Miami Vice. A hey. Thank you. But I feel like you've actually touched on something that I feel is is part of my anti-bedroom vibe, which is that it is, by and large, a room just for the bed. Now, of course, you've got things sort of lining the walls, but in most places, even places that have like a, a master bedroom, the bed is overwhelming the room that it's in. And I just feel... Like, it's a waste of space on some level. I think you're right in saying that it is a luxury. I think it's a necessary luxury. Those exist. If you can have it, you should. For the numerous mental health benefits that just having that private space are shown to give. And those mental health benefits also relay into physical benefits like improved sleep. But I think that what you're describing here is is a difference between having a bedroom and having a room to retreat to. Whereas I don't necessarily know if people who have, say, a bedroom fe always feel like a bedroom is a place to retreat to. For instance, if your room is entirely just your bed, basically, it's not necessarily somewhere that you can go and recharge, especially if you don't want to sleep. Okay, I have lived in over probably 15 houses, and I never had a bedroom that was just a bed. And maybe that's kind of like my own privilege, but I don't think I don't think so. I think most people's experiences is that a bedroom is a personal room. Take for instance our bedroom though. It's yeah. it's just a bedroom. It has dressers and it stores right, things. Right, but you can't... The dressers themselves aren't a means for you to relax. They are storage. You sleep in a storage room. No, but when I go in there, the fact that it's not... <laughs> the fact that it's aura is not cluttered by all of my to-do lists and everything like that. It is a very restful place. I would argue that that is a better argument for having a home den than a dedicated bedroom. So where's the bed supposed to be? Okay, actually, yeah. Without bedroom, where do you sleep? How do you sleep? Well, there's a lot of medical benefits for sleeping directly on a hard surface. Yeah, that's just anti-bed. If you want to sleep I on think a it's stone anti slab, that's your choice. I think it's anti-dedicated bedroom space because here's the thing. A flat floor is not inherently a rest space, but a bed is. I can't go and rest or, or do something that I just want to be doing just sitting on my bed. I'm going to either fall asleep or leave. When you stay in your bedroom or even in bed for extended periods of time, it goes from being a relaxing, rejuvenating experience to this feeling like you've missed out or, or you're not happy with the way you're spending your time. And if I need a space to go that's not my main living space and all I have is a bedroom and the bedroom encompasses too much of my time already, I what am I to do? Here's the thing though, the, the only alternative you've really provided me here is a dense space. And based on that, it kind of sounds like 
to provide the the seclusion that a bedroom provides every person in a house needs to have a den room i don't know most people who can afford to maintain an extra bedroom especially if you're renting it gets really expensive really fast it's just not feasible even if it might be a no no i interesting alternative for the record i'm not arguing for adding a den space i'm arguing for den instead of bedroom and you don't need you don't need a den for every person in the house for the same reason that you don't need a bedroom for every person in the house i mean no but i feel like most people who share bedrooms would say that they would prefer not to well for instance what i'm saying is that your house would already have a number of bedrooms congruent with the people in it. Not necessarily the exact same, but in relationship to it. And I'm saying convert all of those into dens, which could either have, say, no bed and be a personal space that's not necessarily just a bed, or have beds that are stowed away, that aren't themselves bedrooms, but can be slept in. You're just arguing for the Japanese interpretation of bedroom. I'm arguing for a move away from bed-centric rooms, which is what I would argue a bedroom is, a way towards a design that does not heavily encompass sleep space. All you're doing is inverting the model. You're just making the living spaces the bedroom and the the bedroom the living space. Like, beds still have to go somewhere. No, you, you just said the same thing twice. Okay, but my point is valid. You're just inverting the model. You're just making... But I'm not inverting the model because the living space doesn't become a bedroom. You just have more living space. Some of it's private. So you just want to, like, shove mattresses in closets? You just want trundle beds. Uh, They could be built into walls. They could be pullouts. All I'm saying is that a dedicated bedroom is antithetical to the way we as Americans try to relax. And I would argue is antithetical to trying to bolster your mental health because you don't have a private personal space that's not also tied to I have to be fully relaxed or sleeping or I'm oversleeping and therefore not fully utilizing my potential. Your entire argument is rooted in the bed of bedroom and is bullshit. You're not anti the meaning of what a bedroom is. You're anti Bed. I would argue because you're agreeing with the same things that I said a bedroom could provide you're just giving it a different name and saying to remove the mattress no I'm specifically saying that a bedroom does Again, not provide bedroom. those things yes. and I'm saying it 100% does you just said that it, that's not what I was saying what I am saying is that I think a dedicated bedroom is not as valuable as many other forms of room it could be and therefore No bedroom, because it is the lowest hierarchically in the architectural room. Okay, walk your walk then. Why is our bedroom a traditional bedroom then? Uh, Because we have a king-sized bed, and I don't know where else to put it. You love starfishing out in that bitch. You love it. It brings you joy. It brings you peace of mind. (laughs) It's so nice for us to return to that bed and just sleep. And if I could could have that bed... No, no, no. We recently just bought a brand new foam mattress pad to increase the serenity and comfort of the space. When you're investing money in something, you aren't doing that because you hate it. You aren't doing that because you think it's impractical or antithetical. You're doing it because you love it and you're a hypocrite. I am not anti-bed. I am anti-bedroom. If I could, if I could place the bed in that room in a way such that it was not the centerpiece of the room in a way that would fit, say, a desk, a couch, something else that we could use as well as the bed, I would do it. That's anti-bed! God! No, I'm anti-bed room. I still need and love the king bed. I do not, however, want the whole room to be oriented around it. Listen, listen to me. You are- pro- You know, I have lapels. You can just I, grab them. I know, I want I, to. I know you do. You're pro bed. You love the bed. You want the bed. You're pro room. You believe in a private space, a private room. 
all a bedroom <laughs> does is combine the two things you like. And I, I think, don't understand. Well, that's like saying, well, you really love peanut butter, but you also really love gazpacho. Why don't you just have a peanut butter gazpacho sandwich? And the truth is, because I don't think they actually complement each other. No, no, it's not like peanut butter and gazpacho. It's peanut butter and jelly because throughout all time, it has been proven to go together wonderfully. It's a shallow, hollow grave you're digging for yourself. <laughs> I don't think so. I actually think I've created a very strong debate that, while rooted in semantics, has a real-world meaning and application. And I disagree completely. There are people with bedrooms big enough to have full king bed, a desk, dressers, a mirror, all the things you could want in a bedroom, and it's still a bedroom, okay? I, I don't know about that. I think what you're describing is a studio apartment setup. Now, it may be within a house. That's a rentable space at that point. It's not itself a bedroom. You're describing a full suite. If you took that and just made it a den, it would just be a grotesquely large den. What is a den? A bedroom is a bed, bookshelves, maybe a desk. A den is a desk, some bookshelves, Maybe uh, like a reading chair. Well, it can be it can be workspace. It can be uh, entertainment space that's not the public or group space. It can be all the same things that like a living room is, but just for you. So again, in that analogy, where's the bed? Oh, you're right. This no, that's actually a really good point. Which is why have the bedroom at all when the living space so adequately compensates you for all the things a bedroom could give you. You're right. Simply eliminate the room altogether and then you have your answer. Have you gone bonky? No, I just think that I've carried this out about as far as I can go. And I'm going to use this added distance to cantilever myself to a more advantageous spot. I'm so tired of this argument. It's really important that you know as viewers because I know I am right. I don't even need to be provocatively angry. So certain am I in the knowledge that my argument is sound and righteous and yours is just weird. It's just weird. <laughs> this is the fall of like the, the American way. <laughs> it's not just the American way. It's it's everybody's way. I mean, again, maybe it is very pronounced in Western culture, but in ancient Egypt, they had bedrooms. They had beds. They were hard. Oh, yeah, most beds. societies have have bed chambers. That's. I'm just you saying know that why? I'm saying it works. I'm saying they're antiquated. It's antiquated, and if things are old, they're bad. You know, I have often used that very same argument, something is old, we should get rid of it, but I'm more charming than you are, so I get away with it, whereas you just kind of come off like a dumbass. <sighs> See, now she's attacking me, which means I know for certain that I've won. I've taken this idea about as far as I can go. And ultimately, what I think it would come down to is what you're talking about, which is that it is, it is on some level a luxury space. It depends on whether or not you want that luxury in your life, or if you prioritize or desire other types of things. And I think that is a very intelligent statement that has absolutely no place in debate me. It's yes or no, bitches, and that was a maybe statement. Then it's a hard no, and it will never be yes. Because the bed's just in the way. It's so prevalent that in colleges, there are all sorts of products made to try and move the bed in and around the space so that you can get more things in there. Okay, college dorm situations are exploitative for money. They cram as many people as they can into those rooms so that they can charge exorbitant fees. You'd never pay rent that expensive to share bedrooms even with sol someone. No, even solo bedrooms in a college setting are built that way. And it's because they're inefficient, especially when you're on a shoestring, which just brings me back to the issue of luxury. I'm going to say, if you have the luxury to, if we're going to make it that argument, I feel like most people have decent sized bedrooms, get a smaller bed get a bigger room. You are arguing over this really specific, like, 
interior design qualm where you're like, oh, the feng shui is off because I, the bed is too big. It is. It is. And I think... That's not universally applicable. I think it is when you're talking about a bedroom, not just a room that has a bed in it. I swear to God. See, if I just continue, if I just continue to redefine the problem, no, I'm, eventually I'll have won. I feel like I need a nap, so I'm going to retreat to my bedroom where I don't have to listen to your bullshit <laughs> rhetoric. <laughs> All right, final points. I won because bedrooms are generally good. I don't know. Uh, I won because of roundabout semantics. 